Welcome back everybody. So today is another cook with me video and it's also another leftover video. The other day I made a delicious meatloaf recipe and I also did a mashed potatoes and brown gravy recipe. I highly recommend you check those two videos out. I will leave them at the end of this video and in the description below this video. So I made this delicious meatloaf. I did the mashed potatoes gravy. I put peas on the side. It was a wonderful Sunday supper, but I have leftover meatloaf. And instead of just reheating those leftovers, I thought patty melts. So basically I'm doing a patty melt, but instead of making my own patty, I'm going to use slices of delicious meatloaf and smothering that with some onion and Swiss cheese, a crusty Texas toast style bread, and it's going to be a wonderful second meal for my husband and my son. So there's just enough for two sandwiches. I'm going to start cooking. Stay with me, stick with me. By the way, go check out that meatloaf recipe. It's pretty good. Okay, gotta go. Okay, so first things first, I am going to start by slowly sauteing, caramelizing some onion. And this is probably the longest part of this whole quick leftover patty melt meatloaf recipe is taking time to really develop the flavor in the onion that you're going to use and you know get a nice caramelized situation happening. So let's do that. Okay, so my pan, I'm, it, it's not on a high heat. When you are caramelizing onion, it's not on a high heat because then you'll burn the sugars before it has a chance to really develop and break down and, you know, do its thing. So I'm probably a tablespoon of butter is going in there. And I'm also going to add just a little bit of, what is this I'm using? Normally I use avocado oil. This is just safflower, safflower oil. Um, okay, so I'm going to get that going. And again, you want to work with the low heat. I'm not trying to like scorch anything. So you want to work with the low heat. Sorry, I'm going to repeat that. <laughs> you want to work with the low heat. Um, I'm not trying to burn the onion before it has a chance to really break down and for the sugars and the, the natural sugars in the onion to caramelize. So anyways, this is basically two small onions that I had. Um, one medium onion will do right into my pan. And again, low and slow when caramelizing onions. So how long will that take? Could be 20, could be 30, could be, I don't know, I think 20 for this amount. <clears throat> and I'm, actually, this is too high. You don't want it really burning and sizzling in the pan because this is not really a saute. Caramelizing is a slow process. And if you don't want to wait for the onion, you can just do a, a saute, that's fine. Just make sure it gets soft and translucent and you're good to go. But I really want to take these a bit further, a step further and caramelize them. So I'm just going to let this do its thing and then I will be right back. Okay, so while, uh, again, while this is doing its thing, I want to show you guys I like to always show you the dial on my stove top so it gives you an idea of what I'm cooking at. Like, I, I can't give you an exact temperature, but this is pretty much like somewhere between two and three is where I'm, what I'm working with. It's, it's not really a high flame. Again, caramelizing onions, it's not a quick process. I know some people, after they saute it and, and cook the onions out for around 10 to 15 minutes, they'll add a pinch of sugar to kind of help along the caramelization process of the onion, but I'm just gonna let it go. I've got time. My husband, he'll be here in about 20 minutes. I've got time to caramelize some onions because the rest of this patty melt goes fairly quick. It's not, you know, the, the onion is actually the most time consuming part if you're caramelizing it. Now, if you just wanna do a saute and just kind of, you know, quickly uh, cook your onions out, that works too. So again, going to let these do its thing and I'll be back when they're done or maybe somewhere in between. So this is around five minutes in. Hello. Hold on. Hold on guys. 
And I thought I had time, and my husband's here. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> so I'm still going to caramelize these onions. <laughs> He's going to have to wait. But it smells so good. Okay, so it's about 10 minutes in. And as you can see, there's already some caramelization going on. I'm going to take it for like another 10 minutes maybe, maybe less. I don't know. I just want to get some color on these onions. Onions look so good. How long should I wait, babe? <laughs> I guess I could start the patty melt now. Yeah, do you want that? Yes. <laughs> I'm very hungry. Thanks. <laughs> Okay guys, so apparently he's content with the onions. I'm probably not going to caramelize them because he's hungry, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make his patty melt. But I do suggest that if you do patty melts, take the time to caramelize the onions. Really. <laughs> okay, so according to my husband, he is content with the onions the way they are. I would like them to be a a deeper golden brown color, a little bit more caramelized, but it is what it is. He's hungry. So I'm going to go ahead and put these to the side and start building this patty melt. Okay, so my onions, I put them aside. Sorry. So this is a nonstick ceramic pan, and I'm going to show you my meatloaf here. So I've cut off some slices of meatloaf and I'm going to warm them in this pan. The reason I'm not using my cast iron skillet for this is because there is ketchup in this recipe. Ketchup has sugar. Sugar will burn in my cast iron skillet by the time it heats through. So I'm going to stick this in my nonstick ceramic pan, heat this through, and then I'll start building my patty melt. So just to help this kind of warm through and not stick too much on the pan, I'm going to add a little bit of oil. And I think oil would work better than butter at this point. So, okay, so this is heated through. So now I'm just going to place my meatloaf slices right into the pan. See if I can get one more. There we go. I'm not really going to fry these. I just want to reheat them. So I'm just going to let them heat maybe a minute on one side, give them a flip. A minute, take them off the heat, and then I'm going to start building my patty melt. Now if you are making a patty melt and you don't have meatloaf, all you're basically doing is making a hamburger patty. You season it the way you like and you pan fry it and make you a hamburger patty. But if you do have leftover meatloaf, I do suggest you make you you make you a meatloaf sandwich or a patty melt because it really it's delicious. Growing up, meatloaf sandwiches, I look forward to it. You know, you guys know my love affair with a good leftover, so. Oops. <clears throat> As you can see, that ketchup gives it that brown char because I really haven't heat. That's one of the reasons why I don't warm it in the cast iron skillet because it'll burn more and get sticky. It'll stick. 
So if you are reheating meatloaf in a pan, use a ceramic nonstick or a Teflon, whatever you have that's nonstick. It makes your life a lot easier. Okay. So this is pretty much warmed through. I'm going to set this aside. And here we go with my cast iron skillet. And I'm going to show you the meat. I'll be right back with you. Give me one second. I'm going to go and get my bread. Okay, so I brought you guys a little closer. So here, I'm, I'm working with a low to medium heat. I'm going to add just a half tablespoon of butter. I'm also adding a little oil. And I really want to develop a nice crust on my Texas toast on the exterior of the sandwich. So this is the reason I add a little oil so the butter doesn't get too brown and burn before my toast does what I want it to do. So let's see here. All right. And you can definitely butter your bread first, but I just find it a lot more. Let me get you guys squared away. There you go. There you uh, er, Okay. I find putting butter and melting it in the pan just seems to give it a more even distribution on the bread. So you can butter your bread or, and here I'm working with two slices of Texas toast. Texas toast is just thick cut slices of white bread. So here we go. So let me get my meat. So we're going to let that kind of toast first. And I'm going to arrange. E. That is hot. And this actually might overlap a little. Let's see here. Maybe like that. Yeah, I think that'll work. So there's my half of my meatloaf sandwich. The other two slices will be for my son. Now what I'm going to do is add the onion right on top. Ah, oh, not in the pan. And I'm telling you, caramelized onions just, oh, if you have the time, do it. But I have a very hungry person waiting. Oh, and before I forget, we got to have the Swiss cheese. So, going in with one, I'm going to do two slices. These are thin sliced. Two slices of Swiss. You're not going anywhere, little onion. My bread right there on top. There we go. You know what? I think I'm gonna go with another. I'm gonna go with another slice right there. That'll keep it stuck together. <laughs> and I'm going in with just a little bit more butter. There we go. So this already looks wonderful. A little bit of char, golden brown action going on. I'm really working with a low heat at this point. Cast iron skillets really do cook evenly and retain a lot of heat. So if you're doing this at a high heat, 
this bread will burn before the cheese and everything melts and marries together. So keep that in mind. Work with a low, a low to almost medium heat. Just eyeball it. It depends on your stove as well. But you want to take your time because this is a thick piece of bread. We've got lots of cheese, onion, the meat. So take your time with this. Don't be in a rush because you will burn and you won't get that ooey gooey effect from like the cheese. So once this cooks, about mm, another minute, maybe less on that side, I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. Here's a closer look, you guys. It's almost there. I can see the cheese already about to melt and I'm probably gonna pull this off here pretty soon. But this is a delicious looking meatloaf patty melt. Okay, so here's this patty melt, and listen to this crunch. Oh my gosh. There you go. Delicious patty melt. Okay, so my husband's dinner's ready. I'm touching it. He doesn't mind. Okay guys, so here is this delicious patty melt. We gotta see what my husband thinks of it. Gooey cheese, the onions, the meatloaf, delicious. Okay guys, so he's gonna try it. <laughs> I knew you'd like it. If they, there were caramelized onions, you would tell the difference. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this cook with me video. I hope you get some ideas, definitely for leftover meatloaf. And again, check out my homemade meatloaf recipe. I think it's a it, it's going to be a favorite in your home. Super easy to make. The mashed potatoes, the gravy, Sunday suppers are the best. Anyways, until next time, I will see you.